So on December 22nd, the NBA will officially be back. And with so many teams getting better in both conferences, both conference standings will look way different. So in today's video, I'll be discussing who I think the top 8 seeds will be in the Western Conference. Please drop a like on this video to help my video do well in YouTube's algorithm and just help my channel grow. Subscribe to my channel to help me reach 550 subscribers before the end of 2020. And if you just want to see more weekly NBA content and comment on this video to start a conversation with me because I respond to all comments and play that intro. With the first seed in the Western Conference, I see the Los Angeles Lakers securing the spot. And I think this is a pretty easy selection, as the Lakers were the number one seed last season, and in this year's offseason, they added a lot of talent and depth. Such as Montrez Harrell, who won the sixth man of the year last season and is a dominant presence in the paint. Dennis Schroeder, who came in second for the sixth man of the year award, will be solid whether he comes off the bench or starts. Although I think Gasol's acquisition is a bit overrated, I still think he will provide some good post defense, good passing, and good shooting at his position. And they still have returning players like KCP, Caruso, and Kuzma. And now that Tohard and Tucker guy looks like he could be solid. I expect LeBron to miss some games, but I expect him to still be LeBron. AD might prove to be the best player next season, especially in the regular season. But yeah, this Laker team has two top five players and the best depth in the league. It sort of would be wrong to not give them the number one spot. With the second seed in the Western Conference, I see the LA Clippers securing this spot. And I really consider giving the spot to Denver, but I had to give it to the Clippers since they do have a top three player in Kawhi who I don't think will have as much load manager ga games this season and I think regular season wise Paul George will have a way better season and in general their supporting cast in Serge Ibaka who might be their third best player next season. Lou Will will always be one of the best six men in the league. Patrick Beverly always brings his perimeter defense, and Marcus Morris will be a solid 3 and D player, and Luke Kanak can space the floor. That's some pretty solid depth to go along their two stars. The Clippers have the talent to win the championship, and you're flat out wrong if you disagree. With the third seed in the Western Conference, I see the Denver Nuggets securing the spot. And it might see like I'm sleeping on Denver, since they are coming off a conference finals appearance, but this offseason, they lost Jeremy Grant, Mason Plumlee, and Torrey Craig, and I think those moves might make Denver worse. But there also is a chance that they improve, because I think Jamal Murray will average 21 to 25 points per game next season and be an all-star. Also, Michael Porter Jr. will likely have a bigger role and will be a high teen scorer. Nikola Jokic will be Jokic, and I think he might be a dark horse candidate for the MVP. Bull Bull has looked good in the time that he has played, and I think if given the playtime, he can be one of the contenders for the Sixth Man of the Year award and the Rookie of the Year. Will Barton will be returning next year, and I think he's very underrated because he provides solid perimeter shooting and is a good scorer, averaging 15 points per game. I think there's a real chance Denver gets the second seed, I just don't predict it because there is a chance that they're slightly worse next season. With the fourth seed in the Western Conference, I see the Dallas Mavericks securing the spot. And next year, I expect a more improved Dallas since they added more defensive players, such as Josh Richardson and James Johnson. Also, Dallas last season was one of the best offensive teams, and they might even be ne better next season, due to me believing Kristaps will have his best season ever. Because at the end of last season, he was playing like an all-star, averaging over 25 points per game. I also think Luka Doncic will be net better next season and will be a dark horse candidate for the MVP. Because I believe he will have the necessary stats, all he needs is a better, te better team record. My biggest fear with this team though, is the fact that with the season being shortened and Kristaps expected to miss the start of next season, Dallas will start off rough and not do as good, maybe. Around their two stars, they have solid supporting players like Tim Hardaway Jr. who when he gets on fire, looks like he can be a star, Maxi Kleber who's a good center who can guard the perimeter and shoot. 
and Dorian Finney-Smith is a good 3 and D player who looks like he improved this offseason a lot. So Dallas has a very good team, I just fear for Porzingis' health. With the 5th seed in the Western Conference, I see the Portland Trailblazers secure in this spot. What many people don't realize is that the reason Portland wasn't good last season was because of the injuries due to their role players. But this year they are returning fully healthy with Yusik Nurchik returning and I expect him to play like a top 10 center and be a fringe all-star level player. This offseason Portland also got Robert Covington, one of the better perimeter defenders in the league which they desperately needed. Carmelo Anthony will be a solid scorer off the bench and Gary Trent looks like he is one of the better shooters in the league and Rodney Hood is a solid scorer. And to lead those supporting players, they have CJ McCollum who will put up his usual 20 points per game but hopefully be more efficient next season and I think Dame is an MVP candidate because no one talks about him but he definitely can have the stats and if Portland surprises me and gets a top 3 seed, it's very realistic. With the 6th seed in the Western Conference, I see the Utah Jazz securing this spot. And I also believe Utah has turned into one of the more underrated teams in the whole league. Because don't forget, for a long stretch of last season, Utah was a top 3 seed until they dealt with some injuries. But I think next year, they will still be really good. Because I think Donovan will take a bigger leap next season because in the playoffs, he dropped multiple 50 point games and nearly averaged 40 points per game on 50% from the 3 and 50% from the field. And Donovan before the bubble definitely wasn't capable of that. Rudy Gobert might have his best season since it's his contract year and apparently he wants a max contract so he will be looking to prove himself. Bogdan Bogdanovich will stay one of the, as one of the most underrated players in the league and be Utah's second best scorer. Mike Conley was horrible to start the season last year but he ended it better so hopefully he can keep that up for them. Jordan Clarkson is one of the better six men and scorers off the bench. Utah has a squad and don't sleep on them. With the seventh seed in the Western Conference, I believe the Golden State Warriors will get this spot. And you might think I'm sleeping on the Warriors, but I promise I'm not. The problem with this team is the fact that they have no chemistry at all. Their whole team is literally different, and they're not a talented enough team like the Clippers to where they can still be a really good team. This Warriors bench is made up of a lot of G League level players, and I expect to, us to see the best version of Steph since 2016 and I see him going nuts this year. I also think we will get a better Draymond from last season and Andrew Wiggins will score his usual 20 points per game but the question is whether he will be efficient or not. There's a chance that Kelly Oubre might be their second best player all around because of his ability to score off the ball and on the ball and play very good defense. A lot of people act like they don't remember James Wiseman is still a rookie and will not let most likely not be a star or even a really good center straight out the gate. At best, I see him being a slightly above average center who won't be great on defense. I think this Warriors team is still a good team but not legit contenders and I expect them to struggle with their lack of chemistry. With the 8th seed in the Western Conference, I see the Phoenix Suns secure in this spot. I think the addition of Chris Paul will help them make the playoffs for the first time since the Steve Nash era and Chris will be a good leader for their team and their younger players. And this will lead to DeAndre Ayton having his best breakout season because Chris always elevates his big men. Devin Booker was efficient before but along Chris I think he can be even more efficient and could have a 50-40-90 season. Phoenix now has a legitimate big three of Booker, Paul, and Aiton that can rival other teams' big threes. The Suns have really good supporting players around them, such as Dre Crowder, who brings good perimeter defense and shooting, Mikhail Bridges, who I think will take a leap and be a really good 3 and D player who can handle the ball at times, and Cameron Johnson was an underrated rookie last season and will provide spacing. The only thing holding Phoenix back is their lack of experience, but I think Paul will help with that a lot. In my opinion, I don't think there will be a huge difference from the 4th to the 8th seed, so I would be lucky if I got more than half of my predictions rate. 
Anyways guys, that's it for the video. Let me know who you think is going to make the playoffs in the West. Like this video if you like the video. Subscribe to the channel to help me reach 550 subscribers before the end of 2020. Or if you want weekly NBA content. And comment on this video to start a conversation. Because I respond to all comments. And I'm out.